All right. What's up, party people? How's everybody doing today? Trudy, I see you. Michael, what's up, sir? Victor, always good to see you. What's up? What's going on, everybody? No, not you, Victor Pena. I'm talking to Victor Rubio. Come on. Victor Rubio is here every week. Super stoked to have you guys all here today. We've got a good session in store and in flow for everyone. Today's topic is going to be focused on how to optimize our workflow processes within our shops, right? Everybody probably has a way of doing it right now, and that's fine. But I want to challenge everybody to, to get in the mindset being like, how can I improve what I'm doing today so that I can work and focus on scaling my print shop operation tomorrow? And in order for us to get from where we are today to where we want to be, there's usually things we need to tweak and optimize in the process. So we have our very own Victor Pena. For those of you who may not know him, Victor's the founder and CEO of Omniprint International. Um, and he's going to be walking us through today how we can go about optimizing our workflows and our print shop operations so that we can take things to the next level. So Vic, without further ado, man, why don't you take it, take it and run with it. I'll take it and run with it. Thank you, Ryan. Of course. Hello, hello everybody. Thank you so much for being here today. So let me start off with some intentions. Today is super important because, you know, this is, this is a project that, you know, we've been working on for so many years. Why? To help you guys grow and to optimize your print shops. And this is through automation. So what am I going to show you today? So I'm going to show you everything from being able to allow your customers to enter an order from your own web portal, right? So I'm going to show you how that part works. And today I'm using work. I'm using our own software work that we developed in-house for all our customers. So I'm going to show you how you can empower your customers to send you orders in an automated way and how all that works, right? I'm also going to show you guys how the print to scan works, right? So, or scan to print. That's why we're here in the, you know, our demo room and right here on the machine, right? So I'm gonna show you guys when a customer puts in an order and you scan a barcode, how all that stuff works to allow your machine to start printing that order. Where does this help you guys, right? It helps you when you're starting to get employees in and you want them to load you want them to print the right image on the right garment. You want your customers to be notified about the orders. That's when it starts going into play, right? I'm also going to show you guys how the shipping is automated by using the same barcode, right? So just by scanning the barcode, it's going to load the customer information and your UPS label is going to come out automatically, right? So I'm going to go through each step. Make sure you guys put your questions on the chat or Q&A. Wherever you can, Ryan's going to read them off to me. I know some people wanted really to see this and we get people reaching out all the time as their shops keep growing. Now, how can I keep more organized? Some of the pain points. Let me share some of the pain, point, pain points that this helps you solve, right? So if you're experiencing a lot of back and forth emailing from customers, they're sending you artwork, they're wanting you to put in the order, you have to go back and forth and you know, tell them, hey, give them the mock-ups. You have to do all this stuff. All of that stuff is unpaid work, right? Work helps you resolve that. If you're having issues scaling or keeping track of which images go with which order, right? And as you get more busy, if you're printing the wrong stuff on the wrong size for the wrong customer and then shipping it, right? This is going to help you. If you're getting more machines and your volume is going up, this is going to help you, right? No more highlighters and like, you know, Excel sheets trying to keep track of your orders. So we're going to go through that. So make sure, uh, Ryan, interrupt me if you see a question as it comes through. There's some people that got to go at, you know, at 2.30. That they reached out to me already. I think, uh, you know, JC is in here. You know, he wanted to, uh, to know a lot about how this all works. So without further ado, I'm going to get started, all right? So I'm going to start with, you know, what we call a live store, right? So there's a few ways a customer can send you orders. Work gives you a few different options. So a live store is an actual customized store inside of the work platform. You could also have your own store. If you like taking in the phone calls and, and all that stuff, and you have sales reps, they could also put in orders right into your back end, right? So I'm going to start with that on how an order would come through, right? And then I'm, I'm going to start with that process, I'm gonna share my screen, all right? So feel free to interrupt me with questions. All right, guys, this is what we call a live store, right? So this is done in the workflow platform and you can have the main benefit of doing this 
is that you can have several stores for different niches for customers. And what that does is it helps you separate or segregate out your audience, right? And this is meant to be super simple and it's tied into all of the products that you offer, right? So we'll go through here, uh, we'll click on this T, right? And then this will load the options that you select and the colors that you select and the sizes that you sell, right? So this will help you if there's some colors that you don't want to carry, all of that's configurable. This is actually tied in to our own product engine. So our own product web service that you enable or you disable depending on which products you offer, right? So for example, I'm going to go in here and I'm going to go and order this product and I'm going to add it to the cart. And you would send this, you would send this link to your customer say, Hey, you know what? If you have an order for me, it's a customized order, go to my link and you make them do the order all online. So you're not going to be trading emails back and forth. They're not going to ask you for free mockups and all that stuff. Right? So this is what I'm going to do here. So your customer could be putting in the order. I'm going to select the image here and it'll tell the customer where it's going to go in their shirt based on the print area of your printer. All right. So this is not a web shop, right? So everybody can give you a web shop, right? You can have a web store, Shopify, whatever. This is actually tied to the printing and the production, right? So everything your customer does here is tied into how it's going to print. So if you notice it's already on a black shirt, then your machine is going to know, Hey, I got a printer under base for this. I'm going to do it, you know, an inch from the top or two inches from the top and I'm going to center it, right? That's what your printer is going to recognize based on your platen and based on your printable area, right? And then you also have the back, the left, the right sleeve, all of that stuff here. And you go to the review order and this is going to take this artwork file. This is already checked that it's enough resolution PNG. So the system's going to check that it's a minimum of 150 DPI. You could reject the order. You know, if somebody says, Hey, it sends you a super small image and they want you to print it. You can reject it right here automatically. Now I have the size quantity and I'm going to go check out. What does this also do? So you're loading the pricing that you charge for this decorated piece. You're also loading the ability for them to check out on their own, to pay you. How many times everybody's saying, Hey, this is this, these orders are rushed, right? Everything's a rush, but in the, in the system, if you want to charge for rush orders right there. So if, if they want to give you a rush order, then they got to go in and pay for it out here. Where's the other benefit? You're not printing first, then waiting for somebody to pay you. Right? So every order that goes into your queue is already prepaid. So these, these are some of the benefits that you get from using an automated system to receive your orders, right? This also helps you promote, right? If you have one link that you could send people to order from you, then this, this would be the link that you send. You could also have pre-decorated images. If you have another store where, you know, you have maybe a fight night kind of apparel, right? That are all pre-decorated. You could send them there. That artwork, they can't move around. They're just going to you know, go in and order them. So this is how the live store works. You know, I won't go over the checkout cause you know, that's just a basic uh, checkout similar to Shopify. So I'm going to show you guys here. This is your work management or your work backend, right? You could see from the dates that you have here, you're going to see which orders are coming in, right? So if you notice, you could see like which store name. So you could have different stores show up in your order queue and even a different Shopify store, right? Work also integrates to Shopify natively. So it's going to pull the orders that come in and the artwork that comes in with it, right? So here you're going to see which orders you have. And for example, if I click on the order, this is the order that I just showed you guys that we did. It's going to show you all of the information that is done with this order, right? What's the shipping address, you know, how much they paid, you know, any discounts, all that stuff. You're also going to see the layout. You're going to see how far it's from the neck. And you're also going to see the stages of this shirt, right? So these are all configurable. If you want your customer to know when you, when you're picking it, when you're pre-treating it, when you're printing it, when it's packed, 
you can actually send them notifications so they can stop hammering you. Hey, where's my order, right? The system can also send them that. This is the, the first part, guys. So I want to keep it concise because work has tons of features, right? But I want to talk to you about the features that, you know, are more powerful for you guys. So from this point, Ryan, let me know what people are asking in the Q&A so that we can uh, address them uh, before we hop on to the other stuff. That sounds good, guys. If you've got questions, you know, definitely put them in there that are related to wherever we're at in the product experience. J and E Eclectics, that is a good question, but that's it's a little broad. We're gonna we'll get to that one here at the end as we get through uh, the full product uh, exploration here. Go ahead, Vic. Remember, the quality of your questions is equals the quality of your results. So the better your questions, the more I can help you guys. All right. So I'm going to go through and I'm going to show you guys the actual order scanning and printing, right? So if I go here, go to the right. So when you have your order in here, remember, work can help you configure your prices. It can help you configure your shipping and can help you configure how you want to print your labels because this is all tracked and monitored through barcodes, right? So if you notice, you know, I have my barcode scanner. Every time I scan the, the label, I'm telling a piece of the system where I'm at in the process, right? That's how an operator would, would do this, right? So I can go ahead, do this part. You have a different way of printing your tag. If you notice here, I can do eight and a half inch label. If I like like a big job sheet, you know, if I'm used to that, I'll do that. If I want a small tag, these are made to go with the garment, right? There's different configurations. If I want to use the UPS printer. I have the four by six, right? Some bigger shops, they don't want anything but the barcode, right? You guys have seen some of the fulfillment center that just have the barcode there. Um, that's how they do it. So this individual barcode has everything about the job. It has all of the information on the image, where it goes, which customer, and how it's going to flow through your shop. So there's no way you can lose it. You could also do a bulk order if you have like, you know, hundreds of pieces and you want several barcodes in the same, you know, one pager, you can do it the same way. So we try to make this system as versatile as possible to fit your shop. You know, as you automate, you're going to notice that you're going to need to have some rules and how you manage your orders, right? So that's how that part works. And as you print the label, guys, so this is, this is a small label that you would see, right? And I'm gonna show you how this works in the printer, right? So I'm gonna go back so that you guys can see the next phase of this, which is what we call the work bridge, right? So this is what, as you start getting an operator, you start getting help or even yourself, you will navigate away from the user interface of the RIP and you will use what we call the work bridge, right? And this is, if you notice in some bigger fulfillment centers, you have a screen above every printer and all they're doing is scanning barcodes. That's because you don't want, you know, an operator loading the image. You don't want to have a mistake on what size it's going to be. You don't want to have a mistake on how far it is from the neck and all that stuff. So that's what you do here in the work bridge. So I'm going to go ahead and scan, right? So I'm going to scan this label and it's going to load the order, right? So this is the same order that your customer uploaded to your website. This is the same image file. Work routed the PNG efficiently through and made it available on your printer without you having a USB drive and then losing the file or figuring out which is the version of the file that you want to do, right? So, and it's also loading the right, you know, uh, environment for printing, right? And it's telling the operator, if you notice here, which category it is, you see if it's a cotton, you see its size. So your operator can see everything here, right? And all you have to do is press print here and it's gonna send it over to your printer, right? So what does this do? It ends up, you know, sending the job straight to the printer. You're not gonna be able to mess up the job. It's sending it to the rip and it's ready to print, right? So, so I already loaded the shirt. A big and, question for you. Yes, sir. Uh, so Victor Rubio had a question in the chat. He said, can you link to a Shopify store, but only view orders that you as a drop shipper have to fulfill? Let's say I start by searching with for all SKUs that contain something like DTG in the SKU title. Can you do that within work? 
Yeah, you can. So that's a great question. So we've done a lot of automations with customers that have like 200 stores and then they have different product mixes because some of them are going to be the custom ones that you print, right? So you would like filter by that category and then we tell work which ones to synchronize, right? So when an order comes in through Shopify that fits the filter, then work will synchronize it. It'll pull it. And it'll make it available in that dashboard that I showed you guys. And it'll just say that it's from this Shopify store, right? So that's how it manages it. And that's how it'll synchronize from multiple stores or multiple products, you know? So for people who do have one, two, three, you know, 10 stores or people who are acting as print on demand print shops, we can effectively manage the source of those orders and make sure we stay organized as we're printing so yeah. as to not mix up customer orders and everything just stays really neat by setting up filters. That's yeah, what, I mean, exactly. that's really, that's awesome. And yeah. we do have a lot of customers who actually want to expand their print shops outside of just themselves, right? They want to start taking orders and, and plugging directly in similar to what people are using with some of those other products. So yeah, um, guys, exactly. this is, this so is a really you, important if, feature. If, if you're already using it, you could do that. What I always recommend, for example, work natively comes with multiple stores, right? That you could set up different niches and have individual URLs. If you have the same customer or different customers on your same Shopify store, it can get a little hairy, right? So the tech can do it, work can do it, it can integrate. Just try to separate out your customers as best you can because then later in the stage, you can process them differently, right? So, but that, that is a great question. So if you notice, guys that this print is going to be printing here based on what you, what we did here in the bridge and it's also going to be telling the 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 system how long it took to print how much it cost right work is sending this back to the cloud it's going to say which users logged in right so if you have multiple printers and you have different different users logged in they're going to you're going to know who who's the good printer Who's the lazy one, right? Because you can see their print pr prints per hour now. You can see them from your dashboard. So as you guys keep scaling machines and people, right? Because that's the next part of this thing is, is well, once you scale your orders, you got to scale your people. You got to know and benchmark operators, you know, from each other, right? So we're trying to give you as much data, you know, as possible back to your, back to the cloud, back to your control center. So you can see what's happening with your prints. Somebody calls and they're, you know, they didn't check their email from work. Then, you know, you could tell them, oh, you know what? I just, I, I'm seeing your order right here and I know it got printed and it's in the curing phase in the next hour and it's going to ship tomorrow, right? So that's how that part works. So far, I've showed you guys, you know, from, from the order creation, synchronizing it and then sending it to the printer. You know, after this, you guys know you take it and you cure it, right? So that's how the automation part works and work is communicating continuously to the uh, server and bringing down all the artwork files ready for you guys to scan, right? So you don't have to wait for downloading of files. You don't have to wait for any of that information also. So awesome. We got another yeah. one here from Trudy yeah. Ann Victor. She says, what if I know that a certain image needs to be printed with a different environment? like a photo environment, if there are skin tones or grays, is it possible to override the work environment when printing? Yeah, so there's a few different ways, guys. So remember I told you guys that we manage the web service for the blanks, right? So you can actually assign a custom environment to a certain blank or, or image. And you could also override it in the bridge. If you say, hey, you know what? I'm a printer operator. I know what I'm doing. I know this artwork that's coming in hot needs the photo environment. You're going to change it right here. And before you hit print, it'll use the photo environment. You still have some versatility. You're going to get, if you, if you look, the local environments, right? These are customized environments here that are synchronized with the platform. You can, you can have a drop down and you can change it. And this is synchronizing. You could also change some of these options here, the width, uh, margin, top margin, copies per print, stuff like that. And we can also apply an automatic choke and do a, a few different things in the bridge so that you don't have to be working in the rip for it, right? So I remember this is about automation, guys. So the least amount of work that you can do here, the better. Because remember, once you start growing with machines, I mean, there's some, there's some shops that don't 
don't, don't even need uh, to hit this print button. We have auto mode, which as soon as you scan the barcode, the order goes to the printer, right? So it's kind of locked out from changes because you know a lot of the changes are done in the uh, management side of the system. And if you have like 10 operators, you don't want them to be doing all their changes and, and different printing based on how they want to print, right? You want to have the environments all done for them. So that's a great question though. You still have some versatility if you're, you're printing your own stuff too. Got another one from Victor Rubio here. He's got a couple, he's got some good questions flowing in. Yeah. Uh, Pre-print prep. Does work give you the tools to pull orders and batches or does it have to be done one by one? Yeah, so th that's a good question. The short answer is you have a lot of different ways you can do it. You could go in here, see this little box? You could go in here and then print all those labels right? And then you can go through and print all of them and it'll just go through, right? So you can print batches, you unselect them, you can print that one and that one, and then that's how you would do it. And then you can go to also even download the order, right? You can do all these different options based on the individual order, right? We also have some automations coming when it comes to ordering your shirts from the different suppliers. So if I know that I have some blanks that I need to pick, you can also do it. That's actually a great segue, Vic. Does yeah. work keep inventory information so you know where you stand with your blank inventory? So that's that's not fully out yet. We have inventory in the system already. You now we're pretty close to having the counts. So you would have to put in the counts as you receive them, right? But the inventory is already here. So if I go, for example, to products, right? I can go to the products that I want my show, my stores to display. And these are all done here. So if you notice, you guys have the provider here, the item number or style code. These are items that you're going to choose yourself based on the connected suppliers that we have. We have a automated connection to Alpha Broder, San Mar, some of the major ones. So all the blanks that you guys already use, you can configure in your system. Antonio Harrison asks, where's the automation screen located? The screen right here, the, the bridge where you scan. So this is located on the same machine that your uh, printer is, right? So if you notice if, you know, I'll, uh, I'll jump out of this. This is the same computer where your RIP is, right? Because remember your RIP still managing the printing is managing your color engine, your environments, all that stuff is just work is dropping in the order without you having to select all the settings and it's based on automation. So it's living on the desktop where your RIP lives. And this is synchronizing the environments. It's also calling up your store and asking for new orders, right? Hey, do I got a new order? Do I have to download the design? Because it's going to download it automatically so that as soon as you scan, it's ready to go, right? So I hope, I hope that answers that question. If you don't have any more questions, Ryan, then I'll, I'll move on to the next section. Yeah, I mean, Vic, Victor Rubio, has got a, he's just bringing a lot of good questions here. Oh, uh, yeah, let's go. One, one more. I said, if you are providing drop ship services and eventually have to bill for the shirts and or ink you have printed, does work provide invoicing by store that can be generated? Ooh, ooh, ooh. All right. So um, you have different pricing options you have for stores if you're drop shipping. But yeah, you can say, hey, you know what? In this store, I want to charge for Excels. I want to have an extra rush fee or I want to have a few different fees or I want to charge per square inch, per location. You know, what I noticed, guys, through the years is you guys charge in like a million different ways. <laughs> so it's hard to keep track, but we're doing our best to centralize how you charge it's in the system. So yeah, so you, you, can, you can do that. You know, we'll be expanding that even further to allow automa like automatic uh, payments to uh, other stores and stuff like that. But right now, natively, yes, you're able to do different billing options, invoicing per store, and then different, different uh, pricing, even of products, right? So give you an example too. If you want to charge for... If, if you want to show what the blank charge is and then what the print cost is to one store could do that, or you could show it as a blended cost. Say it's 20 bucks. I don't want to show my customer that it's, you know, six bucks for the blank or whatever. And then plus my printing fee, 
you can do that. So you got to play with the back end and see which different pricing options match each customer. What I would say is try to start standardizing it so that it makes it easier to automate in the back, right? Because there's only so much any software is going to be able to automate when you when you're Pricing is weird and it's a moving target. It gets harder and harder as you grow. There's a good question though. And everything is in the pricing area of work. Yeah. And then just Antonio Harrison here, uh, work there. And we'll talk more about this at the end. Uh, work is an additional product. However, every new free jet customer gets, gets a free 30 days and everybody on this call today is also going to get a free 30 day trial um, of, of work as well. So you, you can test it in your shop. Um, and get and get to know how it feels. I'll go ahead and start, I'll post a link to that so you guys can go check it out. All right, what do I do once once I'm ready to ship, right? So we also created a login that would be in your shipping area, right? And your op, the same operator could have a you know different username or the same username or a different shipping operator. They log in to ship your orders, right? So work natively integrates to USPS, UPS. We did all all those connections, FedEx, so that it could print your shipping labels. So you don't have to go and retype the address and the weights. Work is calculating the weights and, and uh, of all the products. So I'm going to show you how that works. Here, what we have is it's a different version of the, think of it as, a, as another, another screen software that's integrated into your work account, right? And this lives in your shipping area, right? Just the same way as your UPS world ship or, you know, the, the computer that you have hooked up to your label printer. What this is doing is you're going to scan the same barcode. This job order and print order number controls everything, right? Throughout all your, your stages. So if you notice, I scanned the same barcode that I printed and it got the order automatically. And it's already telling me what the customer wanted as their shipping options. So I can't mess that up. Right. So it also has the weight dimensions. We're calculating if it would fit in whatever box, you know, based on your configurations. And then you guys see this big print button. Once you click the print button there, it's going to automatically send that job to the label printer for your UPS. So that's pretty much it. Right. So there was no double entry on your job. There's no chance of, of error that you put in the wrong address because the customer put in the wrong address. So we're making the customer more accountable for the way that they enter the order, right? So that's what this shipping terminal does in your automation area. It's also putting the tracking number in that job and sending a notification. If you want it at this point to go to your customer, say, hey, this order shipped, here's your tracking number. Bam, it's going to send them all that, all that information. So physically, this is what I just did. So, so that. You know, because sometimes with the screen share, it could it could see like it could seem uh, uh, a little bit confusing. All right, so I have my screen here, and this is my you know Zebra UPS printer, right? It's 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 printing my shipping labels. So I'm gonna go in and I'll scan I'll scan one and the other so it refreshes over. All right, so every time I scan the new job, it loads the new job. So your your operator, your shipper can actually see, hey, you know what? That was that shirt or that wasn't that shirt. And you can have another way that you can have them QC this thing, right? I load it up there. They could see everything's preloaded. And then I'm going to hit print on the screen and it's going to send the label to the printer, right? So it's meant to be simple, right? So I scan, print, and it's done. And they're going to attach it to the box. So that's all there is to it there. So Guys, I'm also really curious, like what you're already doing for your um, order management. Like, what are you using Google Sheets? Are you using a third-party provider? Post post some comments in the chat so we can start having a conversation. Decide we, that way we can better understand like what processes you guys are already using. Vic, does the shipping component support UPS, DHL, Pitney Bowes, and Stamps.com? Yeah, so that's a good question. So we're integrated directly to the carriers, right? So you, you would put in your account information. we got, uh, you know, most of the major carriers, UPS, uh, USPS, FedEx. So for example, stamps.com is uh, USPS, right? So, so you wouldn't need that, you know, because you're integrating directly and it's hitting your same account, right? So we're not handling the postage for you. We're handling the connection between work and your account. So all these would be your labels, 
your account and all that stuff. Yeah, so so the, the speed and delivery. So remember, this is done by your customer. So if, if they want next day at early a.m., Saturday delivery on a 72-piece box, they're going to have to pay for it first before your shipping department will do that, right? So that's a good question. All of that stuff is done by the customer, and it's the rates are also configured with your negotiated rates on your own account, right? So if you have special rates, your settings, all that, we're not getting in the middle of what your rating and your account setup is. <laughs> well, speedy, de- I, I don't know. I don't know speedy delivery, honestly. <laughs> I've never heard of it either. Yeah. I'm just Googling it right now. Midwest shipping delivery service. Hey, you know, there's, there's, there's a ton of those, you know, there's, there's a lot of, there, there, there's a ton of integrations, you know, we're, we focused on like the, you know, the, the main ones. So you guys can have quick access to, to all the main ones. So, but yeah, I mean, typically how we do it is if there's, if there's like a lot of the audience that's looking for some special integration, then we'll move on and, and do the, do the connector for work. Uh, remember, we also have an API. So what is an API? An API allows you to have third-party applications and drop in the order to your printer, right? To, to your work system, right? So you get your API. And if you have different systems that you want it to connect to, that's how you would do that. And that's, and that's how most like setups are. So uh, JC was asking about, you know, which version works for what your application is, right? So uh, for example, he, he says he's handling uh, all the mock-up, all the shipping, all the printing from start to finish. So there's, there's a few different versions, right? So at the beginning, we only had like the big version uh, with automation and the, the, you know, scan to print and all that stuff. And so that's called the, you know, the pro version. And that gives you the ability to do what we just did. So if you're handling all that stuff and you're getting some help or you want to streamline how the jobs come through, you would need the pro version, right? And that comes with all the stuff that you see here. Doesn't come with the shipping stuff that you, you know, you can get additionally, right? There's also a basic version, right? So the basic version uh, helps you streamline the way the orders flow in, right? So the way the, fl- the orders flow in, your live stores, your order management, all that stuff, they'll have to go in and download the artwork and then use the RIP to open it up and print it like you know really would, right? So there's no barcode scanner and printer and all that stuff that helps you do the, the automation part, right? But you can grow into that. Those are, the, those are the main options. If you grow and you scale past that, we also have some other options for enterprise, you know, custom accounts. For example, if we have a customers with, you know, hundreds of stores that we need to get the orders from all the stores and we need to deliver them to different printers and that kind of stuff, then we work on customized solutions for that. Yeah, Vic, Johnny had a good question. He says, does the work software include hardware like the scanner or label printer in the purchase package or... Do we at minimum have a uh, recommended hardware to go with it? Yeah, so that, that's a great question. On the pro version, you guys will notice uh, on there um, that, that that has the scanner and the printer with it um, because you need it to, to be able to uh, do that work, right? So that comes with it. That's why there's kind of a, a setup fee there or an activation fee. Covers the hardware, covers that kind of stuff. And then we know that it's the drivers work, everything works, and it comes with that package. Uh, the basic doesn't come with any hardware because there's no automation to it. So once you get your you know orders per day up and you need the automation, you could easily uh, upgrade to it and then uh, then you would get the, the hardware. Guys, I'm going to go ahead and post a link again in the chat for everybody, for people who are interested and want to uh, get in there and check this thing out and kick the tires a little bit. Uh, you can go ahead and just click the link that I just posted in the chat and go set up an account. Uh, it's a free 30 day trial or um, if you have any, if you have any issues there getting that, just let us know. We'll get, make sure you get set up. Yeah. I see a question right here from Joe. If you go to the site, you could see, but the, the scanner and the printer come with the pro package, Joe, if you don't have the pro package somewhere around 500 bucks for both, something like that, but don't quote me on that. Uh, look on the page. Or, uh, but yeah, you can, you can get them after the fact if you have the basic. Victor says, in each of the versions, you have two bullet points I don't understand. I.e., in the enterprise, you have unlimited Shopify integration, but a 50 web store limit. 
In the Pro, you have a five Shopify integration cap, but it also says one web store. What does this mean? Yeah, so the, the web stores are the internal stores for inside of work, not the connection. So you have what you have, what we call the live store, which is what I showed you guys. And that's a, you know, store within the same platform. And you can, you can actually, uh, now we have different ways that you can upgrade to more stores. If you want to start with one, five, or whatever, there's like an additional cost per month per store. And that covers like all the traffic and hosting we got to do to move the images over uh, and all that stuff, right? So connect the store or the Shopify stores is different from your internal live stores that you would create on your own inside the system. Let me know what you guys think on here. This was meant to be an, you know, uh, an overview. Obviously, this is, this is big, right? Some companies pay hundreds of thousands of dollars to program something like this and automate their shops, right? So it is a big system and I know there's a lot of information. So, you know, let me know if you guys want us to do another session or just give, give me some general feedback. Was this good or was it a lot or was it too little? Just let us know. Let us know in the chat, right? Let us know in the chat so that we know how to better position stuff for you guys. What's easier to digest? You know, you guys want to go and try it and then have some questions. Just let us know. That way, you know, the more feedback you guys give us, the more that we can make these sessions more valuable to you guys. And then the more that I can hammer Ryan to give you guys some more free stuff. That's right. That's right. <laughs> uh, yeah. So really, who thinks, who here thinks that they could benefit from having a tool like this? Post in, post in the chat. I want to I know. Uh, Big League, yes, there will be a replay of this. Let's see. Really interesting. Trina says, really interesting concept. Can totally see us using it when we get busier. Good to know that we can grow without being afraid of it. Absolutely. Victor says, for me, it's close, but I would like to see a few specific items. Victor, go ahead and email us. Vic, what email should people email to to get set up on a demo? Actually, Vic Yeah, just, just uh, e email you, Ryan, and then we'll set up. We'll set them up. We could do a one-on-one -on, -one on specifics. We love specifics because the, you know, the, the engineers can, can uh, help you guys or a customer experience can help you go on to specific things. So uh, email us, Victor, and we'll reach out. We'll set up a session maybe 20, 30 minutes with you and go through live on mm -hmm. what, how it could work for you. Yep. Yep. Joe, you said you have a full-time, it's yourself and a full-time employee in the shop. Is it best for one of us to have the system on our computer or have a designated PC for the DTG program? Yeah. So for wherever you have your RIP guys, that's a designated computer, right? Um, because you need to have it loaded with your environments and all that stuff. So you, you can be able to print properly, right? So that's the computer you would use on the bridge. Everything else, it's all web-based, right? So you go into your account, log in with your username and password, and you can see it on your phone or, or anywhere else, you know, on, on any computer. And Nicholas Feinstein, you don't have, like, if, you, if, if you're set up on Shopify or some other shop, you don't have to host your products customer-facing or consumer-facing on work in order to get the value of the automation from work. Work can integrate with whatever your e-commerce cart provider is. It doesn't have to be consumer facing. Therefore, it's not going to break any of your SEO stuff. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't worry about that if you just want to get access to the automation side of things. Yeah. So originally, guys, the main reason why I decided to develop this is because I saw a lot of customers with their highlighters. Uh, you know, they're messing up orders. You don't know which ship. You don't know like how the actual production of managing on-demand orders that are like different images, different products, right? That's why we did it. So it's meant to be a workflow tool to help you get your the, the order from point A to Z, which is shipping it, right? And managing the high quality artwork throughout the process, right? So originally, I didn't even intend to have a live store to bring in the order, right? It was just going to connect to whatever your store is, right? So, but it does both because... You know, a lot of customers don't even have Shopify yet. I don't know if you guys were in it, if you remember, but like a year ago when we did our first creator session, we ended up creating a basic version, giving it to you guys for free because we noticed 51% of our customers didn't even have a web presence. And I said, hey, with COVID, we all need to be online. Oh, yeah. uh, so that's what we did, the front end web stores for you guys. So it's meant to optimize your production workflow in a high quality and efficient way and have a front end now uh, where you could send customers easily to order your stuff, right? 
so uh, that's that's a good question. But that, those are the main goals for for this system to help you grow. And you know, one order, then you mess up, and then you ship, and now you have to pay shipping, and now you have to redo the order or refund somebody. The, all that stuff's costly. Make sure you're tracking it, even if it's offline right now. Mm -hmm. Yep. And the last thing here, I just want to make sure this is clear. You do not need to be a big shop to get the value out of work. If you've got an operation, you're doing 100, 200, you know, 300, 400 shirts a month, whatever, you can still get value out of this product without having to pay, you know, your pro or enterprise fee. So actually, I would recommend, highly recommend that you guys figure out and get a tool like this set up before you grow to a volume to where you have to, things get more risky when you implement new tools into the program. You know what I mean? Um, a, a product like this isn't going to break the bank, but the value that you're going to get from it at these ground stages, these ground levels is going to supersede whatever incremental costs you're going to inc incur from it. And that's why we designed it and engineered this tool so that it's, it's low cost, but high value, low cost, high value, low cost, high value. That's, that's the name of this game. If you guys yeah. do want to get set up on a demo, an individual demo, email me. My email is Ryan, R-Y-A-N at omniprintonline.com. And I will plug you in to the right team member to make sure that we, we spend 15, 20, 20 minutes with you personally uh, to give you guys an individualized assessment of the tool. Um, so that people who are, who are interested and you know, if you've got questions like, hey, do I need it? Do I not need it? Uh, we want to be able to answer that question for you because the, the truth is everybody on this call needs streamlined workflow, whether you're printing 100 shirts a month or 500 shirts a day. Uh, and this tool was built to, to, to service everybody in between those two parameters. So take yep. action I, on it. I love that. I love that, Ryan. Remember, guys, too, start tracking, like, how much time do you spend on email with a customer if they're asking you for free mock-ups, they're asking you everything's a rush, you know, if they're sending you bad artwork, right? If you don't have anywhere to send them while you're sleeping, right, so they can go pay you, start tracking all that. Because even if it's the basic version and you don't need automation yet, you do need somewhere for your customers to go and pay you and make orders that are streamlined. You have them go upload the image, your pricing's correct, you know? If you're spending all this time quoting, right? Ah, uh, you know what? I'm gonna cut and paste this quote from this other customer and give it to this customer. You're just doing repetitive tasks that the system needs to be doing for you, right? So oh, yeah. keep track of these things, guys. These activities are non-revenue generating activities. So make sure that you have a system that does them for you. Spend time in front of the customer, helping them, selling them, all that stuff. Not doing their mockups for free, or free rush jobs, or or you know all sorts of like freebies that we have to give customers when, you know, you feel you have to when they're on the phone. Yep, absolutely. Guys, was this helpful for you? Like, give me like a, give me a 10 in the, in the chat if this was helpful for you. Victor, I see you with the thumbs up. I just want to hear from you because we spent a lot of time talking about this and thinking about this and preparing for it. And we've spent a ton of money on investing into this tool so that you guys could be put in a better position. There we go, 110. Okay, good, good. All right, I better see everybody here at least signing up for a free account. Sign up for the free 30-day and let kick the tires. Let's see how it goes. And if you hate it, email me and tell me. If you love it, email me and tell me because we take that feedback and we calibrate accordingly. So one thing, Ryan, uh, Luis, come over here. Come over here. I want to introduce you guys. This is Luis. This is our head developer, project manager, everything work. He runs the whole team and coding every single day. So everybody, let's give them my hands up. This is a product that, yeah, I come up with harebrained ideas on how to help you guys. Remember, there's engineers here that are working super hard to make these ideas a reality for you guys. So I wanted to bring them up and give them some kudos. So thank yeah, you, Luis. Joe, yeah, there we go, Luis. And by the way, Luis, Joe signed up for a free trial. Joe, it sounds like Joel's really interested. Johnny Thomas 111, does it come trial come with full training? Johnny, we will make sure you are fully trained. Um, if you sign up for this product and start using it. Yes. Yeah. So we're going to, we're going to get people on the platform. We're going to get people using it and there's no good excuse really not to, in my humble opinion. So I hope to see That's you guys right. out there. Vic, any last words before we close out? No guys, you know, feedback is the most important thing you guys can give us, you know, besides referrals and uh, you know, anything we can do to help you guys and continue to help you grow. That's what we're here for. Uh, just let us know without us knowing we can't help you. So, that's important and, you know, crush your, crush your week and we'll see you on the next one.
Absolutely. Again, email me if you have questions and if you want to demo Ryan, R-Y-A-N at omniprintonline.com. I just posted the link in the chat again for you guys to set up a free account. It takes two seconds and you guys are going to get in there and get whatever you need access to. So email me, Ryan at, at omniprintonline.com. Let's get you set up on a demo. We will make sure you're trained and we'll see you guys next week.